The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. Welcome to Real Agriculture's Canola School series. I'm Kara Oosterhaus. In this episode, I talked to John Gavlosky, who is an entomologist with Manitoba Agriculture. We're currently in mid-June, and Bertha Army Room traps are starting to go up across the prairies. So John and I talk about setting up the unitrap, as well as the importance of scouting for the insect early on in the season in order to prevent damage later on. Uh, Bertha Army Worm right now are in the ground as little pupa. And uh, later in the season, this is an insect that has the potential to be a problem for canola growers. Uh, the, the problem stage is actually the larva. The larva can be either a green, brown, or black caterpillar, and they will climb right up the canola plants. And uh, once the plants start shedding their leaves, they feed on the pods. So that's why they're a problem. Right now we have an opportunity. They're a pupa that lives in the ground. And in a week or two, they're gonna be flying around as adult moths. So what we can do right now is set up these green uni traps and these traps are designed to catch us the adult moths of the Bertha armyworm. And using these counts, we can then forecast what is the risk of these larvae later becoming a problem. So that's what we're going to go over today is how to set up one of these traps. So this is called a uni trap and essentially what it is, some people call them a bucket trap. They will snap apart. Get rid of the pheromone layer in there. So the bucket, and there's a funnel component here. And what we do is we, and there's a lure basket that the lure goes in that we want to attract it with. So the moths are going to be flying around at night looking for a female. These are the, the, the males that we lure into the trap. And the males are flying around at night looking for the females. We put an artificial lure in here, we draw them in, they fly down, they go down that funnel, they fly around a bit, we put an insecticide strip in this trap that will eventually kill them, and then once a week we count these and we know what our levels are like. So, we're gonna get the pheromone lure put in. They usually come in a package like this. You can just rip this package open. Now it's important, uh, do not touch the lure with your fingers because it's got uh, chemicals on there that the moths have to smell. And I'm just going to get the lure dumped into our little basket. So the lure is just a little red rubber stopper. That's what the lure looks like. These stoppers have been basically dunked in the pheromone. They've got the pheromone on there. So you just put that into your lure basket. Again, make sure you don't touch it with your fingers. You snap a cap on here and you just plunk this into your trap. So your trap now smells very attractive to a male Bertha armyworm. They think there's a female in there. So in evening time, this is where they want to hang out. You just put your trap up on a stake like this. Uh, you, can, you can buy, if you don't have something like this, go to a garden center. You can get these shepherd hook stakes that are the right height. Uh, they come in different sizes. You can get those and put those in place, they would do the same thing. We usually try to have them just a few feet off the ground. Now the canola is very small right now, it'll be growing, so this will be just above the canopy uh, most of the summer. We usually set these up in early to mid-June and we keep them to the end of July. So probably in a week or two, we'll start to see moths ending up in here and we'll count them weekly. And usually by about um, uh, early July, we will have some idea areas of the province that might have more Bertha armyworm problems. So the, the larva again is the damaging stage, uh, they're defoliators. So they will feed on the leaves, they will take chunks out of the leaves. That's really not a huge issue. Unless you have a lot of them, it's not a huge issue. The big problem is when the plants start senescing their leaves later in the season or if they defoliate the plants too much, they will move up and start feeding on the pods. That is a big issue. And that's really what you need to prevent is that pod feeding. If most of the defoliation is happening later, late flowering, um, into the early potting stage, the defoliation, again, doesn't really set the plants back a lot. The pod feeding is what's really critical to prevent. So we encourage people get out there, um, flowering, late flowering stage, scout for them. And if you're finding any more than about 20 or 30 of these larvae in a meter square area on average, uh, we consider you to um, 
know what's happening come early potting stage and if you do need to control them early potting stage very early potting stage is the time to do it so what can you tell me about any economic thresholds that might be out there right now so there has been research done on economic thresholds now it is older research we do need to do some updated stuff with modern varieties uh, but the best we've got to go on right now is research that suggests about 20 to 30 larva per meter square as the threshold uh, and that was developed using both field and lab studies. Uh, they're basically putting berthas onto plants, caging them there, letting them feed, and figuring out how much yield loss was occurring for a given level of bertha armyworms. Uh, one thing though we caution people with that 20 to 30 per meter square, if it's very dry conditions and uh, the, the leaves are senescing quicker than normal, it's gonna drive the bertha up onto the pods uh, a bit sooner. Plus, the, the plants just can't compensate as well. So uh, you're sometimes better off to adjust that threshold a bit if it's very dry conditions. When you're scouting, if it's, it's likely going to be during the day, uh, these are actually type of climbing cutworm. And they have that typical cutworm behavior where they don't like to be exposed during the day. So during the day, they're at ground level. Uh, if there's trash on the soil, so if there was a pile of trash like this, they'd probably be right underneath it at ground level. So uh, during the day, what you need to do is you need to get down to the ground level, pick a way through the trash, the debris, the stubble, clumps of soil, cracks in soil. The larvae are gonna be hiding, you need to find them. And what I suggest is don't try to scout a whole meter square. It's too big of an area to cover. Uh, take a quarter of a meter square and do a thorough job picking through the debris and looking in that area and then just multiply by four and you've got your meter square count. We, we will be having our data from our traps um, posted on our website uh, starting about uh, late June. So we encourage farmers, agronomists to uh, check our websites and uh, get to know what's happening with the bertha levels in your region. Uh, we can sometimes go through several years where we have very low levels and then all of a sudden you get two or three bad years. Uh, the last couple years we have had some spraying for Bertha armyworm. I won't say that we're into one of our outbreak cycles, but something we do need to keep an eye on.